Welcome to the Superhero Sidekick Leadership Coaching Podcast with Joel Smith and Joe Baker. We're here to help you develop your superpowers. This is the Superhero Sidekick Coaching Podcast. I'm Joel Smith. I'm Joe Baker. We're not here to be the superhero. We just want to be your sidekick and help you along in building your business, building your not-for-profit. Let's help you grow it fast and really scale. Be sure to check us out on Facebook and visit us at SuperheroSidekick.com. Welcome back to the Superhero Sidekick Coaching Podcast. I'm Joel Smith along with Joe Baker. Joe, how's your day going? It's going good. Excited to be here. Excellent. So this is the third part to uh, to our uh, series on the greatest tips for putting on a world-class event. So go back and listen to the first two. And uh, this uh, last one, we are going to be talking about how to fill out a form, uh, uh, filling out a form for correctly. That sounded horrible, didn't it? Just how to fill out a form. But we're, we're specifically talking about donation forms. And I think there is an art to this. And Joe is going to talk about uh, maybe, maybe a little bit the reasoning of why we want to format it the way we do and, and have it set up. So, uh, so go back and listen to the other two podcasts if you haven't listened to them, but, uh, and then come back to this one, but we're going to go ahead and get started. So Joe, uh, you just got done talking about the big ask in our last, in our last podcast. And so the natural extension to this would be, uh, what do we do next? So. Yeah. How do we close them? How do we get them? Mm -hmm. How do we get them, get, get them to put their money down? Um, you know, it's an important part. And I, I say a lot of people I work with in their event, this is the part that kind of boogered up. They end up having a form that just looks like an IRS 1040. And it's just so complex. And, um, and there's so much information to put, up, put on there that you, you begin to lose that emotion that you feel while you're filling it out. You want to make it so clean and easy. Now, now remember, in the previous previous parts we talked about we're gonna we, this is a room full of fanatics this is a room that have been following you for a year uh that are going to be filling out this form this is the people um that have already been through an event that many times has told them what they're giving to what they're giving for uh and that what the goal is for the room uh there's everyone has an understanding of what is being what they're being asked to give and what it's going for uh and so once you have all that foundation laid out, well, now you're ready to talk about the form at the event. And at the event, you want to actually have your closer, not just emotionally close, but then you want them to pull out, have every, like walk everybody through pulling out that form. Now, when I, um, well, you wouldn't believe how many events I've been to where they've tried to do some version of this, but the first time, that the closer has ever seen the form is like right now, <laughs> like at the event, you could tell it on their face. And they're like, wow, this thing is so complex. And so like, they need to actually rehearse the parts of their speech of actually taking you through the, this form. You know, it's so important that they're, they're actually like walking people through it. Now at our events, I don't even want anyone to see the form until the closer is ready. So we actually have the forms in an envelope that says, do not open until um, until the close at the event. And so it's like, it's, there's a point in the, in the event where they're then going to pull out their envelope, you know, and that everyone understands that. And one of the reasons for that is you don't want people filling this card out early. You don't want anybody filling this out early because that's the whole point of the event. The point of the event is for God's to move in their spirit and for them to go from the amount that they had committed on the drive over to doubling that amount. How do we get them to give significantly more than what they, than what they planned to give uh, when they drove over? And so you don't want them opening that form until it's time. So when it's time, you, everybody together, you want everyone in motion. Everybody take out your forms right now and everyone gets out their forms. And the first part of the form has all of their personal information on it. But you don't want to make them write down all that information. You already know all that information. I mean, how did you get them to the event if you didn't know their name, their phone number, their email, you know, their address? These are all fanatical people. You better have all that information. They signed up for your event. You know, you, are, you, you place them in a certain location in the room. And so, and so it's like you have all this planned out. Why not have all that on the giving form? Uh, in, in fact, on the giving form, I even like to put what they have given in the last year and what they have given 
um, over the course of their history of giving. So I have all this information right there for them to see. And, and it's like, and all I want to say when, when the closer is walking through this part of the form is for them to say, hey, just make sure all that information is correct. If, if we get your email, your address wrong, just cross it out and rewrite it there. Um, but, but, but one of the other aspects of having all this information here is you don't want anyone to sneak out of the room without giving, okay? And if the form is blank and someone leaves a blank form on a table, okay, you have no idea who left it. But who's going to leave a form on the table with all their information on it and all of this, you know, the, the, if, they, if they're going to hand this thing in. And so it's like, it's already loaded. You don't want to lose that. You don't want that to be on the floor and you don't want to hand it in without it, anything written of what you're going to give. Mm. And so it's really important that the form is previously filled out before, um, before anybody gets there. Yeah. Now, Joe, how would that relate to uh, like filling out a form electronically or digitally? I just went to a fundraising event uh, just a, a while back where we were, you know, encouraged on our cell phone just to go to a quick website or to scan a QR code on the table. And then we went there and boom, it was right there. Simple. You fill this stuff out, boom, and you're done. Um, where, what kind of a place is that? Uh, yes, yeah, so that, this is a, the, there are these other concepts, these digital concepts. Um, I would be very careful with the way that I, I want to do these events to let mm -hmm. anyone pull out their phone. You know, this is my, my philosophy on it. Um, I've been to events where they've used this. I've, I've seen it done well. I've seen it, seen, seen it done poorly. Either way, it has the same issue. And the issue is, is that when you, when you go with the tech form, and I, I like tech everything. I mean, I like, if it makes my life easier, like I want to make it tech. Um, but the problem is, is our phones now are this, are this gateway to all sorts of access to us. And you just carried them into this very emotional place. And you're like, everybody now get out your, your phone. And then bam, I say, oh, look at that. I missed five text messages, two <laughs> emails and three calls. You know what I mean? It's like- And, and I got to check up like, on the score of the game, right? <laughs> yeah, and the game. And it's like, suddenly you've just given them a portal where they can then quick, oh, maybe I, I better quick respond to that. You know, I think the, the kid's throwing up, you know, or something like that. Like you, you have just- you could really lose people with that. And so I'm scared sure. of phones when it comes to giving. All um, right. Fair enough. Um, on top of that, if they do have to scan a QR code, what you're saying is, is that they have to actually load in that information. They have to put in their name, their phone number, their address, all that information. All of that is, is like, you know, kind of leading people to say, you know what? I just want to be, if they want to be present, they might just say, you know, I'll just fill this out after the event. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, you could actually lose people in that process. And, and when you hear my process, there's another problem with the digital concept as well. Um, but I like old fashioned paper and I want them to just see that it's all there. Okay, that's step one. That's the first part of the form. Mm -hmm. The second part of the form is the menu. These are the big three items that you mm -hmm. want some people in the room. And it's good to like, you know, if you're trying to raise like, you know, two million dollars you should have an item on there for you know probably two hundred and fifty thousand another item for a hundred thousand and another item for like fifty thousand where you have a few items that someone could just grab that item that you've talked about like i want to launch a stork bus or i want to fund the or 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 if the whole thing is you just, you just want to raise the money for a stork bus maybe it's you know i want to fund the rap i want to fund the sonogram or i want to fund you know, the sonographer for a year. It's like, there's three like options where your big donors can kind of grab those. I mean, that's, they're emotional, they're exciting for them. And that way they also get to have a choice in the matter too. They're not just having one item, take it or leave it. They're, they're, they get to use their own creativity and maybe their own convictions to direct it towards something. Kind of like in church where you can give to different funds in a church and feel like you have that freedom. I like yep. that. Yep. Yep. So the, so the, so the, Remember, the closer is walking them through the form. They walk them through the first part, walk them through the menu. Then the third part is now not a menu, but some, but some one-time giving. And so what I like to do is I like to try to figure out what is the average of what the room can give. And then I like to make that like that either the, um, the lowest amount to give or go one tier below that. 
if I find out that the average in the room is like $5,000, I don't want to have the lowest gift at like, you know, $250. You know what I mean? I want the lowest gift to be either 5,000 or maybe, you know, uh, 3,000 or something like that. Like, I don't want, I want to lay out the tiers of giving. And usually it's good to have like, you know, five tiers, something like that, five different options, but, the, but the lowest one shouldn't go all the way down to like a hundred dollars. You know what I mean? Like you really want that lowest tier to be very close to what you think the average is. Now, what about having a place where you can just fill in your own amount? What would yeah, you think you can about have that? that? Too. Of course, mm-hmm. of course. But like, you kind of want to try to figure out what that average is in mm-hmm. the room. And you want to kind of push that forward where people feel like there's, they, it's so much, so nice to just circle or X. That's what people are looking for. Um, but yeah, they can fill in their own amount. So the, and, and remember, the ask is specific. We're trying to accomplish this specific thing with one-time giving. Then after they that, the next part of the form, and they're going to be walked through this by a closer, where the closer is going to say, you guys, you guys, together we're going to accomplish this with our one-time giving. But what really sustains the organization is the monthly giving. The monthly giving is what reduces the volatility of the organization because they can actually budget and know exactly what's coming in every month. And that's, that's the blood that actually keeps the organization running. And so we want everybody first to be asked to give one time. And then we want everybody to be asked to give monthly separately. And we want everyone to do it. And, and usually it's like the monthly is when you get into like a club. Like with Storks, it was like, you can say a historic you can save a bundle you can be a superhero you can join our power team they're like these clubs where you commit to different amounts and then you have like better exclusivity to the organization you get better swag you get better you know you, you know it's at the power team level you get access to joe's cell phone number he texts you all the time keeps you up to date on things it's like different levels have different um, proximity to the organization and it's really important that you know, in the monthly giving, they're asked again. Now they're joining the club. They are, and remember, they already committed to the one time and everybody does it together. You want everybody doing each step together. Okay, so now you're inviting them into the clubs. You ask them to circle one of those. Everybody's going to circle one of those. Okay, and then the last part of the form is how are they going to pay? You want to you wanna articulate the easiest, best way for them to pay. Um, the best way for them to pay as far as the organization should be concerned, is all you need to do is sign the bottom and then void a check and put it into the envelope. That's it. That's all they have to do. Sign the bottom bottom of the form and then sign a voided check and put it in there. And, and they, they check a box that allows you to debit that, that check. If you can get that check, that if you can get their checkbook to be the monthly amount instead of a credit card, that they will likely never come off. That's first off. Second of all, you won't have to pay all the fees that you have to pay with credit cards. You know, every month, you know, if you have hundreds of thousands of dollars of donations coming in every month that you have thousands and thousands of dollars of fees that, that are racked up. But in addition to that, credit cards expire. Credit cards sometimes get stolen and people cancel them. And now, as soon as that happens, your organization is now in the business of collecting. And you don't want to be in collections. You, you want to be in mission, right? And so you need to get that check. And you need to convince the people, hey, we don't want to spend, we don't want a bunch of money going to fees. You know, give us the best, easiest way to do this is just to give us that voided check. But if you don't want to do that, feel free to put in your credit card information. And and basically they, they put in that and then Sometimes I like kind of form a little section at the bottom where they can write you a note. That's it. That's mm. it. And you know, one other thing that happens when you, when you get them to put that voided check in there, if, you're, if, if you have the right kind of um, processor, there's certain processors that you can get where you can actually maintain that information. And if you ask them to give again throughout the year, you can debit that right then and there and they don't have to put all that information in again. You know, one of the reasons I use Amazon, you know, is sometimes I'll find a product for a few dollars cheaper online and I'll say, you know what, it's such a pain to go in there and load in my information, my name, my address and phone number, my email, set up an account. It's like, ah, 
I'm going to go on Amazon and click, click, done. You know, mm -hmm. and, and it's like, that's how our giving needs to become. And that's the future of giving. And so if you design the form right and you get the permission to do that and, and the voided check, which proves that you have that for the bank, then you get, um, you know, you get that access to make that one click giving when you call them up and ask them again, uh, that giving. So what do we do with all of these things? We've walked them through the form, okay? Now we have to collect these forms, okay? And so what you wanna do is you wanna get, you wanna show like some motion in the room, some energy in the room. And so I always like to announce to the room what, what we raised. If, if you are able to hit a goal, you should have people just going nuts. And, and you should really know that you can hit the goal if you're going for it. Like you should ask some people in advance, get some feels for how it, what people are thinking about giving. You know, you should know about what you're going to hit. Um, and so you want to, first of all, you want to have motion in the room. So what I do is I have, I have everybody write on the outside of the envelope. I say, take the amount you're giving monthly and multiply it by 12. And then add that to the one-time giving. And I want you to write that number on the outside of the envelope in the top corner. Put your donation form in the envelope. Now, I'd like the men in the room to all come up and hand those envelopes to me or someone on my board. And so the whole room is now moving. You have this motion in the room. And it's like this, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying peer pressure in a bad way, but there's just this energy in the room it's just coming forward it's like and an altar call goes, yes it's just like an it feels like an altar call it's like it's like the sacrifice of the room and the people that are giving big they love this they love this the people that were planning on just getting a free meal they don't like this so they're the, if you get any complaints it's those people it's not the people that are giving big that love giving because they got to write the 25 bucks in the corner and walk up yeah. there and put their thumb over it so no one sees it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So all the envelopes come up. They all have a total on them. And then you have a team that's kind of running those out the door. And they need to run them out the door really quickly. And you need a team about six or eight people to do this very quickly. And they're just going to start adding those numbers up. And you usually have like one group adding like three at a time and then handing them to people with calculators that like – are adding and so like if you if you if you have a process that you've practiced you can very efficiently run all of that stuff in a few minutes mm. and then you want to run that number out to the closer who's gonna like and and it should run out to the closer like a couple times like hey we, if, if, if if we're trying to get to two million hey we just got to one million hey we just got to 1.5 million and like and like you can feel the room picking up the lights are changing the um the audio is getting louder and more exciting like there's music coming. And then when you hit your number, you just like, it's celebrate time. It's like spray the champagne, you know, confetti, <laughs> whatever it is. Like, let's just party, you know, is what's going to happen. However, sometimes you don't actually like hit that. Sometimes you don't hit the number, but you should be getting pretty close or else you, you really made an error, you know? And so if you can get within about 15 to 20% of your goal, it is actually okay for everyone to feel that a little bit. Oh, we just missed it. And for, and I've even had it done at my events, uh, you know, where it's with a closer says, does anyone else in the room want to pick that up? And there's two ways they can do that. They can either say, does anyone want to pick it up right now? Can we, can we finish out this sonogram machine or can we finish out the stork bus? And, and say, can I get three people to each commit an extra $10,000 right now? And I've seen it done. Boom, boom, boom. And then you, then you throw all the confetti in the party, okay? Nice. As, but you need to be within that window. If you're only at like 40% of your goal, don't try this. Right. This is a disaster. Can I have like you. three more people give uh, $750,000? I just need yeah, three. Yeah, that's a problem. That's <laughs> yeah. a problem. I can see that. Yeah. So, all right. Well, hey, this is a... a, a a big process. Uh, I, I like the grand finality that you kind of added to this. That's uh, that's really interesting to just kind of see behind the curtain a little bit and see how these work and and uh, how to really do a productive. Because if you're you know if you're trying to reinvent the wheel and do a, a fundraising event, you know I have to admit I've never done a fundraising event like this. I've been to a lot of them and 
but uh, there's there's so much that you've talked about that I wouldn't even have thought of. So, and, and let me let me tell you one more thing here that you really got to think through. So, for, if so let's just say let's just say that you just raised like let's just let's just say something wild happened. You raised thirty thousand dollars a month in monthly giving. Okay, in monthly giving. Every single day that you don't run those cards, you're losing one thousand dollars every day. You know what I mean? Because I'm I'm just doing the math. Thirty days in a month, okay. Every day that you don't run means that thirty days later that that reoccurring donation is going to start. Does that make sense? Mm, sure. Yeah, yeah. And so and so it's like you want you, you want to make sure that that night is when the donation starts. And so don't let your team off the hook. Your team needs to run everything that night before the people leave. And one of the reasons for that is, is once again, you don't want to be a business in collections. So that night, if someone's card gets declined, you can actually run somebody out, go and find them and say, oh, it's just a little error here. Boom, done, fixed. This will save you like thousands and thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars it, just right there. It, in in the process of this plus sometimes people give really emotionally and really excited and you know and then you don't run it for a week and then you call them up and they say yeah i'm really not feeling that anymore <laughs> you know and it's like that's the worst situation you're in you're like yeah can, can i just give like 10 percent of that <laughs> what i gave you know because they forgot mm -hmm. what what i was calling them to when they were in the event you know they forgot about like how they're swept up in the mission and all of that. And so like, so important that all that money is run and managed that night as fast as possible. So you need a team that's ready to do that while everybody is just partying and networking and just on fire at the end of your event. Mm. That is good. All right. So Joe, uh, they can all get a hold of you at by going to superheroesidekick.com and uh, contact you if they need more information. Uh, or if they want to uh, hire you as a coach, that's yeah. great. So. And, and, and the other, one of the other coaches on my team too is Bill Darpino, who uh, we, we need to bring him on the show here soon. Uh, but he, he, he built a creation music festival, which is the largest Christian rock festivals in the world he ran. And uh, I'm, I mean, Bill and I are really good. Bill's also, I'd say he's even better at events than me. And we would love to help you put together your event, to coach you through it, and uh, to make it really kick butt this year. Excellent. All right. Well, hey, thanks, Joe. Great job. Uh, thanks, everybody. And uh, we'll see you next time.